For today's video, I decided to update my very first blog post, the Aboleth. I really like Aboleths, they are one of my favorite D&D monsters. And I even picked up Dominions 3, because that game had an Aboleth nation. So who are the Aboleths? They are huge fish-like beings with tentacles that drip slime, that suffocates air breathers, but also gives them ability to breathe water, making them dependent on the Aboleth for survival. The Aboleths possess racial memory that makes them great repositories of knowledge, as they have been in this world even before the gods. Highly intelligent, they also have an array of psionic abilities. There are multiple subtypes of Aboleths, but I am going to cover only some of them in this video, not all of them. As always, let's start by building its body. Being 20 feet long and weighing 6.5 thousand pounds, they should have sight modifier plus 3 and strength around 30. They should also have HP 37. Despite its size, it is quite dexterous. So let's give it dexterity plus 1. It is also quite tough. So let's give it health plus 3. Due to its fish-like body, it lacks a neck. So let's give it injury tolerance no neck. Its skin is thick. I will give it uh, DR3 with tough skin. The most difficult morphological trait will be the Aboleth mode of movement. It's an aquatic creature, but it can use its four tentacles to drag itself slowly along the ground. Let's give it no legs semi-aquatic. However, this feature does not remove the normal skill penalties for being underwater. So let's also give the Aboleth amphibious, with accessibility only skill penalties. This way the penalties are removed, but the slow movement on land is retained. Since it still can move on land, but it can only crawl this way, I should also add horizontal. If the Aboleth were a fully aquatic being, then this disadvantage would have made no sense. I will also give it enhanced move for 0.5 in water. Now what about the tentacles? Honestly, this is going to look very confusing, but this is how GURPS Template Toolkit 2 races suggests doing it. The Aboleth has four tentacles, but he has to use at least two of them for locomotion on land. The tentacles also are longer than normal arms and are extra flexible. So to modify the existing arms, I will have to give Aboleth extra flexible long one arms for 30 points. Since the existing legs can also be used as arms, I'll also give it extra flexible long one foot manipulators too for 24 points. And since all four tentacles can be used as legs, I'll give it extra legs for legs with cannot kick, extra flexible and long one for 10 points. I'll also give it extra attack one for some additional combat power. If this is all confusing to you, don't worry, I'm as confused as you are. The Aboleth has three eyes. This is a zero-point feature. Let's also give it nictitating membrane 2 and infravision, because it can see in the dark. It also has a small mouth, full of serrated teeth, but its biting muscles are weak. Let's give it sharp teeth and a weak bite. Speaking of teeth, what do the Aboleth eat? Lords of Madness for D&D 3.5 says that they are carnivores that can also subsist on plankton. I will give the Aboleth restricted diet carnivore. GURPS Animalia gives whales a zero-point feature, plankton strainer, and I am going to borrow it here. This book also implies that they have reduced consumption for food only minus 50%. It lives in water so food only makes sense. The book also says that they really like how victims transformed by their slime taste and go out of their way to eat such victims. So I believe that a quirk should be used here. Likes eating victims transformed by slime. Also, I should add the odious racial habit, eats sapient beings for minus 15 points. 
By the way, since it's mostly an aquatic being that is said to live in the deepest trenches, let's make it immune to pressure by giving it pressure support 3. Deep trenches are cold, so I'll give the aboleth temperature tolerance 3 for cold. The aboleth can also speak both in air and underwater, so let's give it speak underwater. Aboleth can live forever, so let's give them an aging. Now, there is one physiological aspect that I have not explored yet – breathing. While the aboleths are mostly aquatic beings, they do not actually breathe water or air. They breathe mucus, produced by their special organ called milathast. This mucus requires water and food to produce, but it quickly dries up when water is not present, becoming a rough, leathery and completely waterproof cocoon. The aboleth itself becomes paralyzed and enters a state similar to suspended animation. It does not have to breathe or eat. It remains aware of its surroundings, but loses tactile and olfactory senses, and cannot perform any actions, even purely mental. If this membrane is pierced, the aboleth is likely to bleed out quickly but otherwise it can remain in this state forever. It is difficult to represent something like that in GURPS, but possible. However, instead of making an incredibly complex group of traits with uncontrollable triggers and other limitations, I would rather just represent it with doesn't breathe and constant dependency on water and limit it with a new limitation enters hibernation after losing 1 times HP or minus 50%. Also, since the mucus is very slippery, I'll give the aboleth slippery 3. When underwater, the aboleth also surrounds itself with a mucus cloud. Anyone sharing hexes with an aboleth risks breathing in this mucus. If a victim does so, it must roll against health or lose their ability to breathe air and gain the ability to breathe water for 30 minutes times the margin of failure. This is not a magical ability, so I decided to give it the biological passive power modifier. Oh, by the way, did you know that the freshwater aboleths and saltwater aboleths are two different species? The common aboleth is the freshwater variant, so let's add weakness, immersion in saline water, one deeper 30 minutes for minus 5 points. I took it from GURPS Biotech. I forgot one more thing. The aboleths have two hearts. I will represent it with a perk, two hearts, which means that a heart attack affliction will have to affect the aboleth twice to have any effect. Also, I will give the aboleth 5 extra FP. Then there is another biological ability, but this time an active one. The aboleth can coat a tentacle with slime that deals follow-up toxic damage with an onset for 11 cycles. Each cycle can be resisted, but also can be negated by moistening the victim with cool, fresh water. The victim slowly begins to transform, his skin becomes a soft, transparent membrane, and if he loses one third of his HP to this attack, then his natural DR with tough skin is reduced by 2, until he heals above this threshold. Now let's talk about the aboleth's mind. They are said to be extremely intelligent, so let's be bold and give them a plus 5 bonus to IQ. However, their senses are on par with human senses, so let's compensate the perception increase by giving it a minus 5 penalty to perception. It seems that the aboleths are very logical, cruel beings, so let's give them no sense of humor and callous. Next. We have one of the defining features of the Aboleth race – their racial memory. Fortunately, GURPS has an advantage for that – racial memory active with immersive for 50%, for the total of 60 points. Now the only things that are left are the Aboleth racial psionic abilities. The D&D Aboleth has a lot of them, and it's important not to overload the GURPS Aboleth. After all, this is only a racial template, something that all aboleths have from birth. If we check the list, we get a general sense of the aboleth's psionic capabilities. Communication, control, 
non-lethal mental attacks, mental defense, and mental domination. They also can create walls of ectoplasm, and in though I have converted this ability as a psionic power, I don't think it fits here. So let's go with mental blow 4, mental surgery 2, mind shield 5, suggestion 3, telecontrol 2, telereceive 4, and telesend 5. That's a lot of telepathic abilities, so let's give it telepathy talent 2, and one point in every one of these skills. You should also keep in mind that telecontrol only works on humans, so it will be a good idea to replace specialized humans minus 40% with accessibility only sapient beings minus 10%, which will increase the cost to 75 points. Finally, we get a racial template that costs 799 points. That's a lot, but it is not supposed to be a weak creature. You can see the racial template and the sample stat block on the screen right now, but uh, you can also check it out uh, by following the link in the description. Lords of Madness for D&D 3.5 also had some Aboleth variants, Amphibious Aboleth, Wobilith, the Stygian Aboleth. Previous editions had some more, Saltwater Aboleth, Greater Aboleth, Noble Aboleth, Ruler Aboleth and Grand Aboleth. But for now, let's do the 3.5 sub-races. The first sub-race is the Anthibious Aboleth. They are identical to their aquatic kin, but can survive almost indefinitely on land. So let's increase their ground move by 1 and decrease the frequency of their water dependency from constantly to weekly. That's easy. The second sub-race is the Wobilith, also known as the Aerial Aboleth. Let's remove all water-related traits – amphibious, no legs semi-aquatic, speak underwater, pressure support 3, mucus cloud, dependency, weakness, and plankton strainer. It can still pull itself on the ground with its tentacles, so let's give it a minus 5 penalty to basic move. Let's replace enhanced move water with enhanced move air. Since the Wobilith lives in the clouds, it should have a higher level of temperature tolerance, I suggest increasing it to 5. And it should also be tolerant to low pressures. But the Obelith has doesn't breathe, so it's fine. It doesn't live in the water now, so let's remove food only from reduced consumption. As for the flight itself, the book says that it's a supernatural ability. I will give it flight with the Psychokinesis power modifier. The Obelith really should stay away from antipsies if it doesn't want to splat on the ground. The final subrace that I'm going to tackle is the Stygian Aboleth. They are just like the normal Aboleth, but bigger, stronger and fiendish. First, let's scale up the Aboleth, for example from 6.5 thousand pounds to 11 thousand pounds. That should be roughly strength 40 and HP 44 and I will increase size modifier from plus 3 to plus 4. Stygia is supernaturally cold, so let's increase temperature tolerance from 3 to 5. Fiendish creatures usually have some minor resistances to fire and cold, so I will give the Stygian Aboleth DR5 against these types of damage. Also, they often are resistant to magic, so let's give it the magic resistance too with the improved enhancement. The River Styx has a supernatural quality that wipes your memories, and since these aboleths live there, I can represent this highly specific immunity with a perk. Finally, since this is a fiendish creature, let's give it vulnerability to holy weapons. And that's it! Four abolith monsters are done, and I have to say that they didn't really change much during the conversion, as these monsters are interesting as is, which is great. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.